Oh, sorry. Now, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alejandra Costa, and I'm here today because when I was 18 years old, I met a human trafficking survivor, a sex trafficking survivor, and her story changed my life completely, and it changed the way I see the world forever. Joy was an 18-year-old teenager who grew up in a home where economic opportunities were low and when she was affected by the violence of her father. The addictions of Joy's father made her drop off school and find a job to support her family. One of Joy's relatives offered her the opportunity to live in his house in Spain, where he could give her full false documentation to work legally and send money to her family. Joy accepted, and when she arrived in Spain, her uncle prostituted her against her will for four years. This set of circumstances that Joy lived during her childhood, lack of opportunities, economic and social vulnerability, violence of her family, made her vulnerable enough to be deceived and slave in sex trade. Joy's story is not an isolated case. Today, there are more slaves in the world than ever before in the story of humanity. Today, 40.5 million people is victim of slavery in the world. And in my country, Spain, 45,000 women and girls are sex trafficked, and 17,000 persons are victims of labor exploitation. And when I hear this, I couldn't remain indifferent and I founded the NGO I'm leading today, Break the Silence. And when I started this organization, I made myself questions to understand what true human trafficking is, how it works, who does it, what means they use to make it. And I'm gonna share three lessons that I consider fundamental to understand what human trafficking is and how can we approach it properly. The first thing I learned is that poverty and need lead us to accept and normalize the unacceptable. Everyone can face economic, social, and emotional difficulties at a certain point of their lives. Therefore, human trafficking can happen to anyone. For this reason, we need to stop normalizing slavery. The biggest problem in this fight is that we normalize what is not normal, and we are indifferent because at the end we don't believe our sister can be prostituted against her will. We don't believe our siblings can be exploited in other workplaces, so we are indifferent. And we tend to normalize the mistakes we have been perpetrating over the course of history, racial segregation, the Holocaust. It all happened because we accepted that some people could have more rights than others. And we are making that same mistake with slavery. We are normalizing the legalization of activities where exploitation is present, where precariousness is accepted. We cannot consider precarious jobs like entrepreneurship opportunities. We cannot consider prostitution uh, an activity where that depends directly on the exploitation of millions of women and girls internationally a legal activity. Prostitution is a choice made out of the lack of decent and real opportunities. Prostitution is not a job. Human trafficking rates have grown dramatically in all the countries where prostitution and precarious jobs are legal, and we shouldn't accept that. The second lesson I learned is that human trafficking is a fight of economic and social interest. We cannot give innocent solution to complex problems. Slavery generates more than $150 billion for profit for traffickers each year. Honestly, I can understand why so many countries are interested in legalizing these activities, because it's all about profit. And we cannot be innocent in this fight. Creating awareness campaigns, being present in this kind of conversation like this symposium, that is not enough. Working to eradicate human trafficking demands detailed understanding of the crime and the design of complex solutions with real partnerships. Some solutions we are implementing in Spain are capacity building activities for professional in strategic places like airports, borders, hotels to help them identify signs of trafficking and protect the victims. The creation of spaces where victims can be an active part of the political decision-making process so they can decide how and when they want to be represented. The third solution would be creating educational program, programs not only to raise awareness on trafficking but to give real tools to tackle trafficking and to ask for help if that happens. The third lesson I learned is that human trafficking is a system that we all perpetuate with our daily actions and money. 
even though we all know slavery happens everywhere and it can happen to anyone, we still see it so far from our reality. But truth is that the way we all consume food, clothes, sex, pornography, it all perpetuates slavery in all of its forms. Our lifestyle, our economic system, is sustained by the work of millions of slaves in our cities, in our countries, and in the world. And our actions perpetuate the exploitation of millions of persons, and yet we are so comfortable with it. Because its labor is part of an economic structure that we all benefit from. But it is our responsibility to analyze where we are, how our actions legitimate human trafficking, and how can we implement strategies to stop perpetrating that slavery. I don't really think slavery will end, but every life matters, and it's our responsibility to help that lives to get out of exploitation. This is the work we have been doing during these last five years creating strategic partnerships with civil society, business, and governments to design local solutions against human trafficking. And you know, it is not enough. In Spain, we do not have a law against trafficking. In Spain, we do not have protocols to identify properly victims. So at the end, only 1% of the victim is ever rescued. And this is all because of our indifference. And that this is why I, I think that this fight has to be transversal and it has to be approached in every sector represented in this symposium. The conversations we are having today don't change the world. Only strategic actions do that. And if we do not go back home with real conversations and effective strategies to improve the lives of people in our communities, these conversations we are having today are completely useless. So, I believe we all have a responsibility in tackling human trafficking, and I would love to collaborate and exchange ideas with anyone who wants to create a partnership to do this. Thank you so much. <laughs>